Lord God, what sweet words those were that we just sang. Lord, we long for you. We would give up everything on this planet to be with you, Lord. Thank you for that. In your name, amen. Welcome. This is the time of the worship where we get to, as a group, remember the sacrifice that Jesus made at the cross on our behalf. Each week, one of the elders stands up here and gives a message to help us remember and savor the gospel. And today, I want to spend our time in John 6, so please turn there with me. As I talk about this passage, it's hard to do it justice without going through the entire chapter. Um, but 71 verses is quite a long time, quite a long chapter. So I'm going to give you a brief overview. Starting at the beginning of this chapter, Jesus was heavy into the time in his ministry where he was performing signs and healing those that came to him. So the crowds that would gather were quite large. If you look at verses 1 through 14, you see the famous story of him feeding 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. The works that Jesus had done were beginning to draw a response from the crowds. They got exact, excited, called him a prophet, and wanted to anoint him king. But he wouldn't have it, so he left the crowds behind. There was a chase down and an escape, and it led to what I believe is one of Jesus' greatest sermons. So look at verse 26 with me. Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you, for on him the Father God has set his seal. Therefore they said to him, What shall we do so that we may work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. And then Jesus begins to preach. Verse 35 begins with a staggering statement. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. This is an I am statement where Jesus takes the word Yahweh, the verb to be in Hebrew, the name of God, who is the I am that I am, and applies it to himself. He then uses that I am statement and adds a metaphor to explain something about his nature and work. In this case, he says, I am the bread of life. They just ate loaves of bread when they were hungry, and he is saying what he can provide will sustain for eternity. This is in a Capernaum synagogue to Jewish people, and he is telling them that they have to eat his bread and drink his blood for eternal life. Jesus is flipping their worldview by saying, I alone can provide eternal life. He proves his ability to do so by speaking of his preexistence. Look for the words out of heaven in this passage. Three times in verses 32 and 33, he refers to bread out of heaven. And then in verse 38, he says, I have come down from heaven. Jesus preexisted. Jesus is eternal. Jesus is not a created being who came into existence like you and I do at the point of conception. He always existed as God the Son. And he doesn't just emphasize his preexistence. He tells the audience here that he was sent with a purpose by the Father. In fact, five times in these few verses, he references the Father either sending or purposing his coming out of heaven. What was the Father's purpose? Verse 40 tells us this clearly. Read it with me. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise him up on the last day. The Jews were not ready to hear this. They were grumbling and heard so much of this through the lens of expectation that hindered their belief. They let their worldview block a life-saving message. And so they asked questions like, we know Jesus' parents, so he couldn't have come from heaven. Or how can they, this man give us flesh to eat? They more quickly believed that Jesus was preaching cannibalism than that he was speaking of his divine ability to give life-saving eternal nourishment. But Jesus was teaching them what it meant to truly follow him. Look one more time at this passage. Look at verse 56. Jesus says, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. 
Jesus was speaking of a level of wholehearted belief that leads to a life dedicated to Christ, and they were not seeing it. They had an idea of the Messiah, and he didn't fit their paradigm. In verse 41, it tells us that this sermon sat poorly with many of those that followed him. They grumbled. And then in verse 66, we read so much, and it would be easy to miss. It says, as a result of this, this being his sermon, many of his disciples, and in this case, it's referencing not the 12, but the crowd that was gathering. As a result of this, many of his disciples withdrew and were not walking with him anymore. This sermon was scandalous. Jesus changed the followers view of him from a prophet that would be their king to the pre-existent Christ who had come to bring eternal life. Jesus put before them a cost to following and many did not want that cost. Before the sermon, many were chasing him down. In the sermon, he says, I am the pre-existent giver of life sent from the Father and will give eternal life to all whom abide in me. The result of the sermon was they heard this and they withdrew. Now let's read about Jesus' interaction with the 12. Look at verse 67. So Jesus said to the 12, you do not want to go away also, do you? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The followers of Jesus that withdrew were not ready to abide in him, but were caught up in a wave of excitement that went with his miracles. They went on to the next thing they thought would provide some form of satisfaction for them. They were excited about the healings, excited about the spectacle, but not ready to submit to the Messiah. But Simon Peter knew what Jesus meant. He had counted the cost and there was nowhere else to go. So as we prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper, what can we learn from this? Christian, I wanna to speak to you first. Do you follow Jesus as if there is nowhere else to go? Do you forget sometimes that Jesus was divinely sent from heaven to provide us all that we need? Does this motivate the way you live today? Do you open God's word and echo Peter's refrain, to whom shall we go? These are the words of eternal life. Meditate on that this morning. And there's another group here. There are some that may align themselves more with those that withdrew. You may not know what it means to abide with Jesus as your only path to eternal life. Take these words to heart. Don't look for fulfillment from other places. Don't look for satisfaction and excitement from anything else. There is nowhere else to go but to follow Jesus. So I beg you, do that today. However, do not participate in communion with us this morning. This is something that is set aside for those who do put their trust in Jesus. And so we'd ask that you let the cup and the bread pass by. This time of communion is a time of worship reserved for us that follow Jesus. But if you have any questions, please see me or any one of the elders or the person that brought you. We'd love to talk to you about our savior. The men will be passing trays to the person on the aisles. And today we'll offer them a cup and a gluten-free cracker. Take the tray, pass it down your row and then take communion on your own today. I will come back in a few and close our time in prayer. Thank you.